Hello everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to explain to you the different types of statements that you have in C++. So let's dive right into it. The first type of statement that you have is called an if statement. Um, basically in here you specify yeah, something, so I've created a little variable called i. And let's say i is an integer. And only if the value of i is less than 5, we're going to do stuff. Then we have an else statement, so let's say that we have this if statement and i was 7, so it was not less than 5. Then the else statement will be called if we specified that. So then it will do this stuff. But let's say we also want to check then if i is less than 7, because the special case is if i is less than 7, but not is bigger than 5 but less than 7. Uh, then we can call an else if statement, and then we can specify some other values. So right now I set else if i is bigger or equal than 5. I'm gonna talk about these, these uh, different ways to check too. Then we do stuff. Then we also have a for loop. So basically, we create some sort of value. So now I've created a, another integer. I shouldn't call this i. Maybe I should call this j. And this basically it does whatever you specify in here. How many times you specify it, it should do it. So basically, uh, j starts at zero. And then every time that this loop is finished, j will be incremented by 1. So it will do stuff 5 times. And then we also have a while loop. And basically, while this statement is true, it will do stuff. But, so if, but if this statement is not true, then it will not do this stuff. Then we also have a do while loop. And basically what that is, it, it is exactly a, a while loop. But it's a little bit different because it will first run the code and then check if, check if it should continue. Unlike the while loop, it will first check if it is true and then do the stuff. So basically it's a reversed order. It will first do the stuff and then check if it should continue um, instead of first check if it should continue and then do the stuff. And then we also have a switch statement. What a uh, switch statement basically is you should give it a value. So in this case, an integer i, and then you have different cases. So in this case, if i is equal to 5, then it will do stuff and then stop doing stuff and continue with the rest of the code. That was a really, really quick explanation of all different types that you have. So uh, let's now put them in code. So let's go to Visual Studio and let's create a new project. So new project. I'm going to call it this uh, tutorial 2. And make sure that it's a Win32 console application. That's really important. Press OK. Uh, hit Next. Make sure that it's an empty project. Also really important. Hit Finish. OK, now that the project is created, we need to create our main file. So on source, create a new file, a CPP file called main. Uh, so one thing that we need to include are the includes that we did last time. So once again, what an include is, it's an hashtag include or pound include. Then either um, smaller than, bigger than, or double quotation marks, depending on what type of file you want to include. So do we smaller than, bigger than? And then we type in iostream and we do hashtag include string. Then we specify our main loop again, so int main, uh, don't worry, okay now that we've created our main file, we want to uh, do two includes that we all also did last episode, so we want to do uh, pound include or hashtag include, either smaller than or bigger than, or uh, double quotation marks. Then depending on what type of include we want, right now we want something that's external of the project, so we we'll use a smaller than, bigger than. Then we type iostream, and then we also do a hashtag or pound include uh, string. Oh, not stack, string, because we also want to use strings in this example for printing stuff out to the console. Okay, so let's now create our main loop, a main function. Um, so that's, we need to specify the return value first. So in this case, an integer, then the name, which is main, 
and then it doesn't take any parameters don't you worry next episode we're going to talk all about uh, functions and I'm going to explain to you exactly what to do and how to make them and uh, what type what you can pass into it and all so basically just going to be a full explanation about how functions work but now first first you want to start with uh, what was the first one an if statement we want to start with an if statement so let's first create a value so let's create an integer specified with int call it um, my value and let's give it a value of four then we can do an if statement so if my value uh, now we have different types of we have different types of um, checks that we can do so I'm gonna specify them here in comments uh, you create a comment in Visual Studio with C++ using a double forward slash I think it's called then it will be green so you know that it's uh, a comment by the way if my colors are a little bit different than you that's true because I modified my colors to to be a little bit more uh, explanatory, explanatory, explanatory to me <laughs> so don't worry if it's different it's just fine so we have a smaller than uh, basically what a smaller than is it is uh, if value is less than so we have uh, let's say we have a value x first after that a value y so if x is less than y then it will be true then we, uh, and then we also have an x, uh, then we also have bigger than so if x is bigger than y if value is bigger than then it will return true so only if x is bigger than y so in this case if x was 4 and y was 7 then it will return false and also if x is 7 and y is 7 it will return false because they're exactly the same x is not bigger that's the next thing that we're going to do oh. x x is equal to y yes it's not just a single uh, is since that would set x to y it's a double is that would check if it's equal to if value is equal then so only if x is equal to y then it will return true so it will do the statement uh, then we also can combine these different things so x is smaller than or equal so both values are true it can be either smaller than or equal to y if value is equal or less than and then we can do the same for bigger than so this will be true if uh, so let, let's say the x is bigger than or equal to y that means that it will return true if x and y are both 7 for instance and x and y like x is 8 and y is 7 is equal uh, or bigger than that are the different types of modifiers that you have so now we can do my value is bigger than let's say 5 so only if my value is bigger than 5 oh let's do in this case 3 then it will enter the statement and um, by the way we use the, the curly braces to specify different scopes and things that you created in a scope are only accessible in that scope or lower scope so if I'd create a value called my uh, an integer called my second value and set it equal to something then I won't be able to access my second value out here because it's already out of scope because the scope ends here after this everything that's inside of the scope does not exist anymore except if you specified it outside of that scope so as you can see we can still access my value that's because we created in this scope and in here we can also access my value because it's created in a higher scope but we cannot access my second value out here okay um, so if my value is bigger than th uh, 3 then we do an uh, stdc output we're going to specify using uh, use Sing how got namespace std remember the name from last episode that's the namespace that's globally used for 
standard things. So what we do now is we make it so that we can just access that namespace without writing a namespace every time. So now we can do a console out, C out, we push in um, um, my value was bigger than three. And then we push in an end line. So it will give us an enter. And let's specify up here um, a C out testing if my value is bigger than three. And then an uh, other end line. So now if you run this program with control F5, remember control F5? Because otherwise it will just run a program and instantly close it at the end. So now you can see that it will say testing if my value is bigger than three and then my value was bigger than three. So that's great. So let's now do the second thing, an else statement. So we simply just type in else and then do the brackets. Uh, so let's do an else, uh, see out my value was less than three. And then an end line. So now if we change the either the value of my value or the thing that we're checking against, uh, it will change the way that the statement works. So now if I say my value is equal to one and we run the program again, it will say my value was less than three because yeah, my value is one and not three. So now let's uh, add the third statement, an else if statement. So let's do that in between, uh, in between here, since an else if statement always needs to be after an if statement. It can't be after an else statement, it needs to be after an if statement. Else if my value is equal to three. Remember it is equal to, that's a double is, not a, not a single is. It's a fault, uh, that's something that, uh, that's a fault that I've made a lot of times and it will give no error because it's just valid. You just set my value to three. But that means that it will always return true because you just set the value to three. That's legit, it, it works. And then it would just always do whatever you want it to do only when the value is equal to something. So that's something really important. Don't forget this is a double is. So let's uh, see out now. Console out, it stands for console out. If you forgot, my value is equal to uh, three. And then an end line, because otherwise it will not have an enter at the end. So now if you set my value to three and run the program again, it will say my value is equal to three. And if we change it to something else, so let's say two again, so it's not gonna be in this if statement, and it's not gonna be in the else if statement. If we now run it, you will see that it will still call this function, this else statement. It will still say my value was less than three. Oh, I misspelled it by the way. <laughs> but what we can do is we can chain else if statements. So I can type another else if statement. And then this we can check for instance, uh, if my value is equal to two. And if my value is equal to two, see out my, my value is equal to two. Oh God, end line. And if we, our, our value is right now equal to two, but what you will see right now is that it will call that function. So basically what we can do is we can chain a lot of different statements, but there's an easy way to do that. If we want to check each number individually, what we can do is um, use a switch statement. What a switch statement is, is you type in switch, then the rounded braces, in that you type the value, um, the value that you want to check. So in this case, my value. And then you use the curly braces to specify, okay, this is the scope in which you're going to check things. Like here, I'm going to specify all my different values that I want to check against. So let's, for instance, say, uh, let's add a case. A case is something that you want to check against. So 
we add a case called two, and then we use the double dots to specify. Now I opened it. This is the case, and in here we can type whatever we want. So see out my value was two, and then an end line. Um, we can do this for, uh, and then we need to specify a breaks break. It's really important. Otherwise, it will continue the code. Since what you can do is uh, say, for instance, you want both one and two to call exactly uh, do, do exactly the same instead of copying the code. Uh, so instead of like having to copy, uh, in this case, the C out, you can just type in case one. So now both case one and case two will call the C out. My value was, was two. So if we changed my value to one right now, what you will see, it will say my value was two. Right here, my value was two because we did not specify a break. But if I would now type a break here, and I would run it again, then you will say, hey, it, it doesn't say it anymore. And what if we want something else? Like, do we have to specify it for every single number if we only want to have two special cases? So we now have my value was equal to one and my value was equal to two, but what if we, uh, I just wanted to say with everything else, my value is not equal to one or two? What then? Then we can use a default. So we just type in default and then the double, quit, uh, the double dots. And then we end with the break, of course, otherwise it will run the code. I'll continue running the code and that's not what we want. We want to stop after we, like after we've done what we need to do. And now we can type C out my value was not equal to one or two. Then an end line. So basically what, was do, uh, what this will do is it will call this default function whenever none of these cases are met. So if my value is not equal to one and not equal to two, you can have up to as many as you want. You can have up to like a thousand different cases if you want to. But it, when it's not equal to one of the thousand different cases, it will call a default statement. So let's say my value is equal to zero and we run this code, then it will say my value was not equal to one or two. That's true. Okay, next thing. So I've already done the switch statement because it felt like a good moment. Okay, so the next thing is a for loop. Let's do a for loop. So the way that you declare a for loop is for, and then you use the, the soft, the rounded braces and then you type uh, some sort of value. So let's just use an int. Uh, let's give it a name. So let's uh, call it index, and so it's a useful, uh, a, a normal name to call it. You either call it index or i. i is short for index. Uh, you set it, uh, set it equal to a starting value, so let's say zero. And then, uh, then you specify do this while this is true. So this is basically a while loop um, a, a different version of a while loop. I will show you exactly the same uh, that you can do the same thing with a while loop in just a second. So now you will specify the statement just like we do in an is statement. So while i is less than let's say five, then we end that part and then we do i plus plus since we want to increment i by one. The i plus plus you can by the way use plus plus on every single, uh, oh, this from the last tutorial, every single different variable. The um, only thing that uh, in this case, uh, but, uh, so it's equal to, it's the same as doing i is equal to i plus one or i plus equals one. What you can do with uh, counting in C++ is you can specify whatever you want to add or remove or divide by before an e uh, is equal to. So what we can do is i divide equals one. So that means that uh, this is a exactly the same as doing i is equal to i divided by one. Or plus equals one is equal uh, is it is the same as i is equal to i plus one. So what we do is we do i plus plus since that's the easiest way to do it. Then we use the uh, 
curly braces and then in here we're gonna let's say see out the current index is and then we're gonna push the index in so we're gonna push an i and then we're also gonna push in an end line you can push as many different things into a console out as you want so what this code will do is it will oh let's move it over it will run this program that uh, will run this uh, will, will do whatever is between the brackets while i is less than five but as you can see it never uh, it stops at four that's because we specified i is less than five and not i is less or equal than five so if we do that and we uh, we first close it and then we run it again now you will see that will also include the five so current index is zero one two three four five okay the next thing is a while loop so uh, a while loop is a really uh, is a thing that you shouldn't use if you don't have to only use it when you have to if you can use a for loop or if statements a switch whatever try to not use while loops unless you really need to for instance for game loop so let's say well uh, let's make a let's make something that looks like a for loop because otherwise it's not gonna never gonna exit so we're gonna create an an integer called index we set it equal to zero and while index is less than 10 do whatever is in between the next curly braces so whatever is in this scope uh, then the first thing that we're going to specify or actually the last thing that we're going to specify in this while loop but we're going to type it first is index plus plus so we'll increment index by y by one and we're also going to do the c out my current index is in an index uh, but let's add uh, just an end line here just so we know that we started the while loop and we're not in the for loop anymore so we're just going to do a c out console out and then an end line yes you can just do that you don't have to specify any type of string or integer or float whatever you can just do uh, c out end line so what this will do it will call this function it will do whatever's in between the curly braces while index is less than 10 in this case so we'll basically do it nine times because uh, index will increment every time and uh, after nine times index is um, not less than 10 anymore but we could also do well true this is a really really bad statement that you should never do and you shouldn't run this on your computer right now at home while you're testing it because what this will do is it's an infinite loop like as you can see it never stops it constantly keeps incremented the current index and printing that out eventually this will break because you're out of values so let's just exit it, uh, exit it right now okay let's revert to the previous thing that we had so index is less than 10 and let's now do a do while loop so we're gonna move this well down here so we first have the scope and then we have the well and now we only have to specify do in front of it so this means that it will do whatever's inside of this scope well index is less than 10 and now we do need to specify a semicolon at the end oh if it moves it by the way it doesn't matter it's fine so now it will first do this uh whatever's in the scope and then check whether it's true so we should see something funny right now oh no actually it doesn't well at least this is also a valid <laughs> a uh, way to specify uh, a different um, loop a different while loop this is uh, an old way to do it I would just use well and then the scope uh, but you can also do it this way if you really want to uh, I'm going to get the sp uh, switch statement so we're basically through a, a true at all so these are the different types of uh, statements that we have let's uh, Re have a little recap we have an if statement that will only run whenever a certain qu criteria is met then we have an else is, uh, if statement that will also only run when a certain criteria is met and then we have an else statement and it will run whenever 
some criteria isn't met, or a lot of different criteria, because you have a, lit, a lot of different else if statements, aren't met. And then we have a switch, and this is basically the same as a chain of if else if statements, and an else. So this, we could basically make a switch out of that, but we have to specify each individual number in this case. We can to my value is bigger than one. Then it will give like squiggly lines underneath the bigger than. We can only do with individual numbers. Uh, and then we have a for loop. Uh, for loop will basically have a value in the beginning that will constantly be incremented. Uh, it's basically a while loop. Like this is the same as uh, a for loop. But a, a, but a for loop is a nicer way of writing it. Since now you need to create a, uh, a different variable and uh, like it's basically going to be specified on at least two lines and it's, it's not as clear as uh, this since uh, also this index will be always accessible in the main scope like in the same scope as my value is accessible while this i, this i, I can't access this i out here, i doesn't exist but i does exist in here so what i does is it's basically a while loop and it also has the uh, the value that you specify to use only inside of the loop that you're working in so basically only inside of the for loop and you have a while loop and it's yeah basically do all this code while something uh, while some criteria aren't met Oh, and one thing that's also really handy to know is uh, we can have a boolean. So let's do it underneath here. So let's have a boolean called, uh, yeah, my bool for now, and set it equal to true. There's one uh, one extra case that I haven't done in here, but I, I also want to learn to you guys. And let's let have an, let's have an if statement. So if my bool, um, then uh, console out uh, my bool was true uh, and then the end line like now I, I think that you might now be wondering uh, like why did you not specify anything after it like why doesn't it have to be equal to something if you don't specify anything uh, as, uh, at least with bools like with integers is a little bit different you should also specify always specify something with um, booleans if you don't specify anything then it will uh, run if it's true and if you put an explanation mark in front of it that it will uh, give you the inverse of uh, what the bool is so then it will be uh, in this case if it's not true then it will run the statement uh, and what you can also do is like have a second bool my second bool and set it equal to true uh, to false and what we can have is so if my first bool is true and then you can also add different things so if my uh, we can uh, add functionality that needs multiple things to be true we can do a double end and basically what that will mean is if, um, if this statement is true and this statement is true do the if statement. So if uh, my bool is true and my second bool is not true, then run the statement. So as you can, tr uh, as you can see, this will now run just fine and uh, see how whatever I specified. So my bool is true. But what we can also do is um, an or statement. So or, so if this is true or that is true. So let's do uh, an or. An or is with the double yeah, straight lines, whatever they may called. So let's now do uh, my bool is also not true. So if my bool is not true, or my second bool is not true, what you can see is my bool is equal to true. So this would return false if we only had that. But my second bool is false, so that's correct. So if you run, uh, if you now run this code, you will see that this uh, console out is called like it called my second bool was true. Uh, my bool is true. So that's basically it. We can uh, chain up as many as you want and we can use, uh, yeah, we can just chain up as many uh, as we want and everything will just be fine. 
So thanks for watching. In the next episode, I'm going to learn you all about functions. So yeah, be ready.